data. We need to map our data flows. Maybe we've already got this because we've got information security in place. Maybe we need to think a bit broader than that. We need to think about the new product development department and what those guys in marketing are doing. Those guys are not. Um, it's about learning the issues, starting on the journey. Now, the two-day course, oh, sorry, by the way, we've also got it as a virtual classroom. You can do it in four and a half hours online using Adobe Connect. So it's like being there in person. Um, and we run these globally. So because they're in English, you guys have no problem joining them, I'm sure. Um, and so there'll be some more coming up in January, um, which we'll promote, I'm sure, to you uh, if you're interested. And this is the same course, but done online. So you have Q&A sessions. You break after a bit of learning and your, le your learning is checked and you get to make some decisions and, and you learn from the other people on the call too um, in, in a webinar scenario. Uh, and we're planning on having some pointed webinars too for the implementation of the, the mastering course. So mastering is your implementation guidance. How to implement. Again, this is two days, it's deeper. If you've done implementing 27,001 or a mastering you know, 9,001 course, it's the same kind of thing. You'll come away with the knowledge of how to do it from a high level. You'll come away with action plans. You'll come away with direct issues. You know, you'll, you'll do some case study work, but you'll also be able to apply it to your own setting. You'll be able to talk to your colleagues in the session, your competitors maybe, your peers. At the end, you'll get a score with how compliant you are. Um, we're looking at developing a more detailed tool in future. But for now, this is the entry level one. We hope this is going to appeal to the young, to the, the, the smaller companies that are out there to help them understand because they're also in scope for this and they're perhaps less well placed to react to it. But what we're really here to talk about is our technical standard. So we have written a data protection certification scheme technical standard which we will talk about how it fits for this for compliance to GDPR, Regulation 679, 2016. And it is really, it's not rocket science. It's based upon what we understand about good procedures, uh, and it was written by technical experts in BB, but by lawyers, people who've been involved in the development of the regulation itself, and who give legal opinions on compliance to the regulation as well. Um, ben Susson, lawyers in Paris, um, they're part of the global network, Lexing, were the legal minds behind this. And there are Lexing representatives here in India, by the way, and if you need a legal opinion, go to them. I'm not going to be able to advise you on legal. BB doesn't do legal advice. But we do procedures. We do good auditing of procedures. We make sure that if you always come into kind of a, you know, a long term kind of situation. So, um, so my organization has entities in the Europe and we have the standard contract which also signed between these European entities and India being the, you know, the, the data center hub. So we have agreements to do data transfer. Um, so our understanding was that if you're bringing in a service provider who's going to do something like an engagement survey globally, we need to have an agreement between that company and the India entity. Uh, however, there is a disagreement that says, you know, it's the agreement is only between Germany and India or UK and India, but it doesn't give you any rights to go and sign an agreement with a third party without involving us. So I, I'm, I'm not sure whether it is. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know how that would work, but uh, I know a similar agreement exists within the Bureau of Veritas. Mm -hmm. We have a shared service centre here, right. and all our legal entities around the world have direct service network agreements, contracts right. there. Um, but again, if it's in a business to business context, it's not pure consumer data, it's, it's, it's personal data. You know, HR might hold sensitive data like your bank account, your salary. Um, you know, if you've got some medical condition, it may be an HR. That is personal, that's sensitive. Yeah. But your job title, what you do when you're available to work, that isn't that. That's business information. Your email address, your corporate email address, business information. 